SEM61 special binary string. Uh, special binary strings are binary strings with the following two properties. The number of zeros is equal to the number of ones. Okay. Uh, every prefix of the binary string ha has at least as many ones as zeros. Uh, given a string S, a move consists of choosing two consecutive non-empty special string substring of S and swapping them. Two strings are consecutive if the last character Okay, whatever. At the end of any number of move, moves, what is the lexicographically largest resulting string as possible? Okay. Well, that means more ones to the front. Okay, what is... So, a special binary string... Let me reread this a little bit slowly for human speed. Uh, every prefix of the binary string has at least as many ones as zero. How is that? Oh, wow, well, well, as many. So there, there could be more ones than zero. Okay, that's a special binary string. Okay, in this case, one zero is a bi great binary string, I guess. Uh, a move is consecutive non-empty special and swapping them. Okay. Uh, hmm. N is at most 50. S is guaranteed to be a special binary string. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't have good intuition of this immediately uh, other than maybe some sort of sorting. Because uh, in these cases, Lexicographically, largest is maybe sometimes some kind of greedy. Uh, I think one thing I would also think about is maybe some sort of divide and conquer, but maybe not. Um, so okay, so I think hmm, we we'll have to figure out what uh what prefix uh yeah what sub what substrings of S are special. And what, what does it mean when you swap two special substrings? Uh, in this case, we swap 10 and 1100. Um, hmm. So, okay. Number of zeros is equal to number of ones. And then the prefix of that has what does that mean? What is a special binary string? Hmm. That means, from what I think this means, uh, and this is you know go, goes back a little bit about what we talk about invariance. What this at least means is that there, that for every special binary strings, uh, there. Zero, there are at least one zero at the end, right? Because otherwise, because by contradiction, um, which I like to say because it's fun to say, oh, what the, like if you have a one at the end, then the second thing no longer holds, um, right? Uh, and in this case, um it's if it's special and we can only swap special ones that means um it's always going to be a cuz it, it's always going to be a how do i say this well, I mean, it's always going to be number of uh, there's going to be even number of characters, where um, where okay, there's a zero at the end, and then uh, there could be ones, but that one has to be matched by a zero, because you cannot have, I mean, you can have two ones in a row, but if you have a one, it has to match to zero, and that's the, until there are no more zeros, right? Because also by contradiction, because if you have something like um yeah I think that's my uh 
my intuition is um, is some kind of greedy based on uh, the properties of special binary. I think my, my intuition is that um, I would do some sort of greedy, but I, I want to at least like make sure that I'm at least on the right track with the greedy. Uh, and some of that is why I'm analyzing the properties of special binary. But anyway, going, because uh, let's say we have one zero here. Uh, well, we cannot have another one here because then, then this prefix have more zeros than ones, right? So every hmm. so this is like the worst case for um, a special binary string. Um, yeah, this is the lexicographic. Uh, yeah, lexicographically. Don't know how to say it. Lexi lexicographically smaller string, um, and then everything from that is an improvement, right? Because this is uh, size two, this is a size four, but that's also the worst case, right? So that's okay. Uh, but anything that's not the worst case, we could we, um, upgrade. Um, so my so the I think the other question is okay. Let's say you have these two, right? Uh, which is what's given at the in the example. Uh, let's say we sort them, right? Is there any case where we will need the one zero in the end? Like is greedy gonna get us into trouble? I think that's another thing that I would think about here. Um, my intuition is no only because um I think I've maybe gotten it, but I don't know the complexity yet. Um, my intuition is no because, um, and it could be something crazy, because uh, the, by definition, actually, by definition, now, now that I think about it, uh, is that given two special strings, if you concatenate them, there's still a special string. So what happened? What you're doing is basically, so the thing still holds as a special string. Uh, so you always want greedily the better one. Uh, but I think this, the cross function isn't just uh, something like that. So given this prefix or this uh, substring, you just compare it to what happens if I swap here uh, and so forth. You check and if it's better than you swap. That's fair. That's fine. Now the question is when is a good time to uh when is a good time to swap? Um so I think you can never get into worst case in a swap because um, because you can al always uh, uh, because you guys always use the new special string in an even better way. It's just that you know you have to keep doing it. So I would have something like you no know, while you know true uh, or this is a pseudo code actually. Well, there is something to be swapped. Uh, swap S. I think that, that's the entirety of the album. Uh, but then coding in a good way is also another tricky for it. Because uh, I think that should be okay. Um, so how do you figure out the substrings? Uh, Okay, so I think the naive thing is to kind of do left and right and then another left and right and just to... I think you could actually just have an n cube formula um, that just checks. Well, that'll be n to the fourth unless you do some kind of rolling cache thing. 
uh, which we Um, the question is, sorry, let me do it. if I had three special strings and you can cut it as one and as two instead. Yeah, I mean, I think that the thing with special string is that you could keep on doing it until it's done. So then in that case, uh, as long as you have uh, this iteration, uh, then you would swap S2 to the front later or something like that, depending on what your strings are. And that would be okay because you checked it that way. Um, and they have to be consecutive, so... Um, I think I'm just trying to think about how to do it in a good way instead of like n to the fifth, which <laughs> which uh, for even for fifty is a little high maybe. Uh, is there an n square? Oh, sorry, n cube algorithm hmm. to do it in one loop. Because that's when I would start thinking about it. Hmm. I think part of this problem is that um, oh, but then you would handle it without the S three because that's just a, another f compare or uh, uh, like you would compare S two to S one and then S one S two, and then uh, I think that's what I mean by wow, there's something to be swapped. It will kind of go through it. It'll keep on going until it can't find anything optimal, so it would eventually find the S2 to the S1 separate from S3 and then just do it that way. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's a little hand wavy for now, and I don't know if I can implement this in a fast algorithm, but that's, uh, in theory, that probably is true, but we'll see if I could come up with something better. Uh, and, and because of that, like, right now I'm not greedy in that sense, uh, in that it's just that any move that makes it better, I would do it, and then we'll go again, kind of thing. Um, but I guess it's not that bad, because even though S is 50, the loops are such that um, the loops are such that uh, you, at worst, they're only 25. Uh, um, special binary strings. Maybe there's something in, yeah. I think that's actually, okay, let me play around with that idea. Let me just write one swap to your point and then see if I could get better about it. Um, so, oops. So, yeah. Let's write some code. For, let's just go start. Maybe I'll do this in Java, since I, maybe I need extra time, <laughs> just for fun, just for today's team, Java. Um, but yeah, is it still s dot length in Java? Um, but yeah, because for a string, I think it's like a method, right? It's been a while, um, and then I have something like okay. So I might create a lot of strings, so maybe Java is, well, I mean, Python too, just that I, well, maybe not, I just need, oh, wait, it, a, a string in Java is, like, immutable, I think that's, okay, maybe I'll do this in C++ then, so I could have mutable strings, I think that's the uh, more efficient way of doing it. Um, okay. Uh, Let's start. Um, and then now we here we want to keep the count of zeros and ones. Uh, I just 
outside. And then set them to zero. For int. Uh, it's called n. Is n a keyword? So n. And this is a, a sp so if s sub n is equal to zero. So too much Python for getting parentheses. Okay, that part's okay, right? Um, well, yeah, but that's the rowing thing. Uh, how can I check that it is lexical? Graphically, uh, or that the prefix thing, because uh, in this case, definitely at the end, even though the zeros and the ones are the same, then it's not many more. Um, oh, I guess we just could check at the end of every step that at any time there are more zeros than ones, we break. Okay. Yeah. Ones we break. Otherwise, because um, we want to end the loop already. Otherwise, uh, if zero is equal to ones, then we have a our our uh, thingy magic special. Right, let's uh, let's print this out just for fun. Uh, just for testing, real quick. Uh, well, maybe this would be better if I have. Substring of oh, it instead of all of it. Uh, see, how do I do substring again? I always forget what the second parameter is. Is it precision or length? I okay, guess it's, it's length. Okay. So then it started to start. Start and then n minus start plus one. All right. Let's see. Just testing for now. It should give us 10, uh, 1100, and so forth. Okay. Uh, I feel like it passed the smell test for me in that all these are indeed special binary numbers uh, or special binary strings. Um, Okay, uh, so then now, given that, um, let's do uh, n2. 2 is equal to n plus 1 in this case. Uh, n2, maybe the naming is suspect though. I apologize for that. Zero is Oh, well, let's see. Maybe I need better naming, or just, just use an array, maybe. Mm -hmm. But then it, it, there, there are more array bound hits, so sometimes maybe, eh, I don't know. <laughs> but I just do the same thing here. Except for the two. Copy and paste poisonous for you. And, um, okay. And uh, now, if uh, if zero is two, is zero to one, that means this is a second special binary, uh, and it's in a suffix. Uh, oh, thanks for the follow, John Kawagami, and. Uh, and stand the man, stand ten man. <laughs> uh, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good night. Um, working on a hard farm. Uh, about 
20 minutes in, so I'm actually not that fast on this one. Uh, but, okay. Because I think I still have another, like, 10 minutes to solve this one. Okay, but now, uh, now we could swap if compared. Is there a cool, easy way to do it? Um, if... Oh, I just write a helper, maybe. Okay, let's let's do it naively with with, uh, with kind of crap performance just to kind of prove correctness a little bit. So let's do, let's screw if um, as substring from start to um, so our original string is this I think, um, and then we want to compare this to. Um, Let's see, the new two, which is n2 plus 1, is the new start. Uh, n2 minus, oh no, no, it's, oh, it's n plus 1, not n2 plus 1, whoops, sorry. Um, and then n2 minus the new start, which is n plus 1, so minus n minus 1, and then plus 1 for the length. Uh, this is why off by ones are tricky, but then you have to make sure that you suffix that with n. No, 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 no. You start n minus start plus one. Okay. Whew. Is that good, everybody? Because that's easy, right? <laughs> uh, okay. So if that's the case, no, no. We want to direction the other way. This is the case we swap. Okay, well let's just print it out and then we could follow along. Um, so just to, just a sanity check. Um, also maybe I can use C out. I actually don't know if this works. In C plus plus. It's been a while. Hold up. Sorry, give me a second to finish typing first real quick. And then also wondering if I'll read your thingy. Hold up, let me add up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, to be honest, I'm really not confident. And that's why, like, um, you see me doing a lot of these printout statements as I go. Um, oh, uh, the short story is that uh, eh, it's just me being dumb. Um, but the longer short story is uh, <laughs> is that um, I'm using C print statements. Um, so then, and these are C++ strings. I forget what they call it. But C++ strings instead of C strings. Uh, so then you have to convert it from C++ strings to, to C strings in order to print out it. That's the short story. Uh, but... I should do a lot of things in C. I should have done this in C, actually. No, then I couldn't have done this fancy thing. But this is cool, because this is exactly what the test case is. Uh, even though I wish we had more cases, so that we could... Um, but, uh, I mean, and obviously I have to write the, the uh, this actual swapping function, which is why we chose C, is be, so that we could do it in place, even though we did all this expensive substring stuff. But... Um, but we could play around with that. We could optimize this later when we, if the algorithm is right, which to be honest, I still am not confident about. But um, but uh, how do I want to do it? Did I use a buffer. Yeah. Okay. In in the name of testing and not carrying up performance, we'll just do it the lazy way. Um, which is just buffer is this thing though do I think technically instead of doing it twice we'll just move this outside the if statement um, and then we just don't swap if we don't need it um, and then now uh, now we can swap it uh, not a fan of Sierra. I need to get better at C-outs. Uh, I just, it's just something that I grew up with. Uh, I did a lot of C back in my youth. 
Uh, so there are a lot of stuff that is hard to go. But I'm, I'm slowly learning. Like I've been using like not like vectors and stuff instead of arrays, and you know, kids get off my lawn because I did too much C. But yeah, you know, I need to be more clear on C outs. I just like print Fs and the other uh, and scan Fs because for me, I felt like they're more precise. But uh, and how how I define everything, but uh, and they get way more powerful as much as. But uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so okay, we, we start at start, start and just copy. Okay, it's probably like a C plus plus copy thing that I don't copy string sub. Like I feel like you could do this in like. Uh, Like there's a function that does this automatically. Hmm. I'm looking at string copy. I forget what the name is. Well, like I forget the exact usage because I always feel like I confuse the length and the position a lot. Um, because in in a lot of languages, it's like left and the right, and some languages left and then the length. And I always have to look it up because I don't know what language I'm using it. So yeah. Uh, okay. So S is pointed to an array of characters. Do I have enough memory for this? Oh, I, I guess I must have because this is the invariant is that the buffer is smaller than the string. Uh, and then you copy. Okay. Let's see if that works then. S dot cop copy. Buffer, uh, buffer dot size. I oh, know. Wait. Wait. Is it the length of? Oh. Hmm. Then actually, I need something like. Uh, yeah. Is this could? Is this kosher? This is going to get me in trouble. Uh. And then, buffer dot size. Maybe. Let's see if this runs. Because we just wanted to start copying at the start. But yeah, I guess that would. In C, you could do something similar because that's a pointer. But maybe I could do something like. I don't know how to do it in C. Actually, I, if this is something like. Is that weird? Is that the pointer? This is probably like really bad. Okay, fine. Um, I'll just do it manually then. Uh, let's have another for loop. Um, I was just trying to be cute and see if I can, but but it's fine. Right. We start at the start. Plus k is equal to buffer k, and then. I guess we just do S. So this should work technically, but it would not be the right answer because you only do it one time. Uh, and then because this swapped, the state change. So I think you could do something like, um, just want to make sure that, um, where is this? Oh, here it is. Uh, and then you say change is equal to true, uh, and then you could put this all in a while loop while changed, uh, which means work is not done. Uh, also, you're gonna hate me for it, but until very recently, um, I've been using uh, non bool. I just used char int depending on how I feel for boolean things because in C that's not a thing <laughs> at least until uh, I think there's headers and stuff but not I don't know that's not what we, how we did things back then but um, but now we have to break the for loop so that because um, a lot some of these these invariants and kind of these loops don't hold anymore so you have to do something nasty yeah. 
which is to say you have to have labels. I think the exact syntax. I haven't done it in a while. Also, kids don't try this at home. Labels are bad. Can cause cancer. Okay, but now I want a trickier case. Uh, but it's good that, I mean, it's not sufficient, but it's still a good direction that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that one thing is right. Um, yeah, yeah, um, this is like 200 loops. It may be, I may get time limit exceeded, to be honest. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah, oh no. What? Is this too long? They answered it. They didn't, like, I got an answer, but they didn't give an answer. Maybe the string is too long and it time stares out. I didn't really look at it to be honest. How long is this string? Uh, eight? All right, let me do a shorter string. It's good to know that my stuff ran though. Does this look right? I guess I don't know. Okay, let's just try a smaller one. That's eight. Eight. 16, 24, 32, 40, I just try 40, 40 is okay. I mean, at least mine ran. Whether it's correct or not, it's another story. Uh, what, really? Why, why is there a, uh, why is the output not showing up? Hmm. Did I, uh, oh, did I miss a leading zero? So this is not valid or something? Oh yeah, what? I don't even know how to copy and paste today. Sorry, friends. Good, good, fine. Two, three, four, five. All right, let's just try this then. Huh. Did choice in a row though. That's a little bad. It's good to know that my code doesn't work even if it isn't correct. Uh, okay, that feels good. Uh, but I feel like that's a local optimal because uh, all the substrings are sorting to the same thing. Um, so you could just so. Hmm, what's a trickier case? Uh, just add another one here uh, to connect these maybe a little bit more. But I think now that actually is not true. So, okay. So in order for me to add one more here, I have to add another zero here. Okay, let's try that. So that hope maybe they connect them a little bit better. I don't know if that's true. But maybe I could just YOLO it and submit and then see what the edge cases are. And I'm not really gonna... Did I mess it up again? I might have messed it up again. Yeah, I, I don't have enough zeros. Counting is hard. I must have removed one. Hmm. <laughs> I copied it by that time, but I just copied from the wrong string. Thanks. <laughs> Hardest part of the problem, clearly. Um, okay, but uh, okay, I think I need to test once with like more ones and zeros. And at least in the middle, I just try one more. And if this is good, then maybe I just submit it and and then get the wrong answer or time limit. I think there's a bad case somewhere. I just don't. Um, okay, well, I guess this is too long, maybe. Or uh, I. I'm just gonna submit it. Uh, there's probably like a weird thing that I didn't do. Okay, cool, wow. It's very slow apparently at 12 milliseconds, so I don't know why they think that way, but um, okay. This feels better than uh, I expected. I, I mean, I took a long time, but I also think I spent a lot of time explaining this. And by explaining, I mean, not really, because I think I just hand waved the line. Like, yeah, trust me, friends. But now, you know, you could actually trust me, maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, huh, how do I go, go about this problem? Well, one is that this is very hard. Uh, two is I, um, I, I mean, I, I haven't seen this problem, uh, you know, but but I have seen something, uh, have seen similar sorting e things, and I think the key, and I don't know if this. 
would work without this. I think there are a couple of sub problems here. Uh, uh, thanks for the oh, excuse me. Wait, burpee day, sorry. Uh, thanks for the follow, uh, Reno, Reno X Men. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think generally, um, uh, yeah, that's why I have the while loop is because if something changed, then um, that means that you could it may be changed in a way that uh, you keep going, and also in a weird way, uh, not a weird way, but I I didn't think about it while I was doing this. Uh, but the reason why um, I did this, and and some of that is because you only swap consecutive, is um, is so actually a cool thing that I just noticed uh, that I I mean I didn't bring it up not because I didn't want to spoil like like there are no spoilers it's just I didn't think about it uh, but the way because um, that I think about it is um, okay so you have this um, you have this like recurrence or not recurrence but this function that's actually I could probably speed up a little bit but I guess I did not have to uh, but the thing that to know is that okay uh, what is the cross function uh, or the sorting function and the sorting function is well one key note is that you don't just compare the two strings because I'm I'm saying this because I made this mistake before, not in this problem, but on a similar one, where um, where if you think about on a equivalent problem, but not this one, um, how come was my closing thing? Hmm. Where um, you can imagine someone like maybe in this one it doesn't really come up, but but let's say you have a string of like um, hmm. I don't remember the exact. I don't remember the exact formation, but but there's a thing where like to, so the naive thing to do is, is to kind of just compare the two strings. In this case, you have this and you have this, um, and maybe actually for the special binary string that doesn't come up, but it's something as a good habit to get into, is that um, so you you make a comparison between two strings. And then you just take the one that's bigger in this case, and you're like, oh, okay, put it in the front. But there are cases where you can cat two of them uh, because they have different lengths. Um, the tie breaking, I think in this case it doesn't come up because it has to be special binary and, and the prefix, and, and therefore you have to be padded with zeros in a weird way. But um, so actually, maybe I'll try again without the, the, the concatenation. Um, but but that's how you do it. Is when you swap, you can uh, you check that just to make sure that that move is always going to be better for you because you're you're looking at the entire suffix, right? Uh, so that's how I think about it. I think a key thing to actually notice, uh, which I didn't at the beginning, but in a hopefully easier to understand kind of way, is that um, because uh, a move consists of two consecutive substrings, and you sort. So basically, what you're doing is you're sorting two, um, two adjacent things, right? Uh, so what does that remind you of? Actually, uh, or what does it remind me of, maybe? Uh, and maybe if you're clever about it, because uh, I didn't do it that cleverly, to be honest, but if you're clever about it, actually, that is bubble sort, right? Um, so... Yeah, so I think that's bubble sort. Um, and that's why you need to out of what you don't well you need it in some form you could prove it you could do another for loop and you could prove that after n is optimal I think um, in the same way that you could do it with a bubble sort right actually um, but that said so but yeah so it's kind of like bubble sort uh, but the complexity is not just n square uh, clearly right because the couple of loops and stuff like this. Uh, I think, like if you have, a, uh, if you think about a bubble sort, and it doesn't actually work this way necessarily, because um, because there are multiple, you know, a lot of these uh, uh, number or elements in a sort um, are in the or they're not independent, right? Like they have overlaps and their weirdness and stuff like this, uh, and this is why I needed to do this uh, go to contain uh, uh, consider dangerous loop. Um, to get out of two, uh, two for loops, I think. Uh, yeah, to get out of two for loops. Maybe I could have even did the third one, but I... No, the third one's okay. But uh, though maybe that's suboptimal. Uh, but yeah, because... But you just said... Uh, uh, so the, the complexity here is that um, this while change loop, even though it's a little bit 
unclear uh, what it is. It's actually, uh, if you think about it as bubble sort, then it will uh, stabilize an O of N, right? Maybe, I think N should be good enough, but I would maybe double check with like two times N or something like that. So this is O of N, uh, and then you have a have this thing, which is O of, um, o of N to the cube, uh, and then you have this comparison, which is O of to the N, right? Um, so this whole thing is or n to the fifth, kind of, I want to say. Um, n to the fifth is big, <laughs> right? Especially when n is 50. But the thing is that, uh, to note is that, um, so the, your complexity is still all of n to the fifth, there's no question about it. Uh, but your constants matter to get this problem solved, which is that, um, you know, n is 50, actually, the only, like, the way we're doing it, they're only um, at most 25 pairs of numbers, right? Because we talked about earlier where, um, where, you know, because they're exact same numbers of zeros and ones, uh, they have the same, um, uh, and the, because of the way that match, there's only a set amount of ends, which is 25. Uh, so you just cut that down, uh, and then you have these this loop uh, that is not from zero to n, uh, you have two loops that are not zero to n. Uh, so you could prove a little bit. I forget what the exact recurrence is. I think it's just like something like uh, n over... Mm, no, no, no. It's like n cubed over six or something like that. I forget what the recurrence is. I think like there's a Taylor expansion to it or something like that. Um, but yeah, but so basically here, uh, this loop is about n cubed to this uh, uh, over six, something like that. Um, so anyway, but my I guess my uh, uh, statement is that the the constants matters in this, uh, and the multiple of the the multiple um, the multiplicative constant is more in this case is a fraction. Uh, so that's why even though the n is perhaps twenty five, perhaps fifteen different cases. Uh, it's a much smaller number. Um, cool. Uh, but overall, a fun problem. I, to be honest, I wasn't able to... I mean, some of that, like, okay, I proved to you a little bit by, you know, having a correct solution. But uh, but definitely, to be honest, when I was submitting this, um, I wasn't uh, very confident about it. Um, but I think looking at it a second time, seeing the change loop, uh, remind me of Bubble Sword, and that made me more confident because... Because uh, the 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 hard thing is that sometimes I mean not in this particular problem, uh, but sometimes it, you could get into a case where um, you know pre prefix a a is bigger than prefix b, and then sometime later, you know you I think the recurrence that you're talking about isn't that um, uh, uh, like in this case okay a times b and that's fine, and then you could do suffix things all that. But what if b is bigger than c, but then c is bigger than a, right? Then you can't really sort this way, because obviously you can't do bubble sort, or any sort in general. Uh, but, the, but, um, but yeah, and also now that I... I want to say that now that I think about it, uh, you could actually even... Uh, well, yeah, well, first of all, you can't sort when this is the case, and that's what I worry about these recurrences, uh, and that's why I wasn't sure. But now that I know a little bit better, I think actually you could probably, uh, using the same uh, sorting framework, um, you could actually use divide and conquer um, by, and then, yeah, you could probably use divide and conquer and then do a sort of, sort of a merge sort type thing, maybe, and then, uh, Yeah, and then um, and then maybe do something in n log n on the bigger loop, but there's there still be like a lot of these things that look like this. So maybe there's like some couple of log parts. I don't know how to do the math on that one, but uh, and don't test me on that one. But yeah, cool. Um, definitely way too hard for an interview problem, but fun for a lab problem, I guess. For lead code, how long did I spend on this one? About forty minutes, which. I think I spend more time with it trying to prove myself correct. I think on a contest, I would definitely uh, 
definitely just like YOLO it a little bit and see if it works, uh, which sometimes gets you into trouble. But uh, but the, but I think I don't think this is a reasonable uh, one to do on a interview. But but it is a fun thing to practice sorting if that's the case because it tests your understanding of things. Uh, but and I I think I, for that re- reasons I like this problem, uh, even though I personally would not ask it as an interviewer. So yeah. Let's take a look at the hints and the answer, but draw a line from x1 x1, if we see a 1. What the? This is a... I guess this is a very big hint. Maybe they've done it a different way though. Um, yeah, hey, hey, uh, John Kwame. Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think that's the one that I'm. I, th- I think you're probably right to be honest, and, and I think that could definitely solve it. Uh, I wasn't able to. Um, I mean, looking back, I think now I have more of an understanding of this problem, obviously. Uh, but I was worried a little bit on like weird conversations because. Um, I mean, now that I think about it, it only happens in way, in weird cases. Because I was thinking about like a case like this, where uh, well, this is a special number. Should we consider it? I think now that uh, I think about it, uh, all the cases that oh, what the, all the cases that are like that um, could it themselves be be um, bucketed. So I think in that case, you're right, uh, and that would actually make the problem a lot obviously easier uh, and maybe that's the solution I'll, I'll, t- I'll take out a solution and uh, I don't know, I'll take a look at the solution in a sec uh, just to see but uh, but I think that's I think that's a reasonable thing I just didn't want to make that assumption I think that was why I didn't do it that way because uh, I, I wasn't sure if like okay given this way is there a case where you want to use this as a sorting I think also to be honest I didn't have um, I didn't have a sorting uh, foundation when I, I came across this problem. I think now that you, you mentioned it, I think it's a little bit more obvious uh, to me because you have something like this. I wasn't sure whether like it makes a difference at the time, uh, whether it makes a difference to compare this element with this element. Um, like if I draw a line here, like or maybe I'll just do it a different way. Like, is it reasonable to split it like this or like this, right? Or even, or like you know, or like this. I think actually now that I I think about it, uh, it makes no difference in that we we would always sort it. Yeah, you're definitely right. Um, but I think I was just when I was writing this, I wasn't convinced. That's all. I mean, I think sometimes, uh, you know, you do the best with the time you have, uh, and sometimes it's a little suboptimal. Uh, but I think yeah, like I I think now that I see it, especially as a sorting, especially with a bubble sort analogy. I'm like okay, well in this case, like, uh, like this is the same as this, because I could just bubble this up to the, here and then bubble this up to here, right? So like it makes no difference, but um, and you're so you're 100 percent right, I, I believe, uh, and I am relatively convinced about it. It's just that at the time I wasn't super sure, um, but I would say even the way I write it, even though it not explicitly, it takes advantage of that structure, um. Uh, to kind of um, uh, like if you analyze this in terms of running time I think mine intuitively as a result of this properly uh, take, a, take, uh, take care of that so that it doesn't you know kill it that much because I think like the difference between this one and this one is that if I the way I wrote it because it just means that I get to get to move up faster which is at the cost of way more comedy way more complicated complexity for sure but it's not wrong i think that's which is maybe good enough but you're right in that like that would save me a lot of time because if we have to do, maybe that's what this thing is saying is that if we have a decomposition oh actually that is ex- okay that this is actually very functional like very giving away the answer but yeah and also like if i had known that um you know i could write this in like five minutes right <laughs> Like you could write this, uh, uh, like I essentially did. I wrote this part 
in like five minutes and then I spent a lot of, you know, so then I could break that into like, you know, push that into a way and then just sorting it, right? So even in coding time, that was saving a lot of time. So maybe you're right. And I think that there is something to be said about like thinking through the problem uh, helps a lot. Uh, and I wasn't, I think I just, like I was saying earlier, inadvertently wrote uh, bubble sort without really thinking about it. Uh, and it's then square. And obviously, if you had done it this way, this is like, you could calculate this in linear time, actually, because then you just keep on partitioning it. And then you sort in n log n. So this will be n log n. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the solution. Oh, well, okay. Th let's not take a look at solutions then. Huh, huh. But, uh, but yeah, cool. Uh, overall, a fun problem. I hope I I, I do hope that uh, yeah. Uh, I think overall, I I mean I have understanding of this problem now, but I do hope that I've see because I think this is eh, a mess. But if I could get it down to this, then that's n log n algorithm, which is way like if they chose an n that's like you know a thousand, I cannot do this right. But um, but I got away with it. So uh, so yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, 